So this is sort of the situation as it stands now. Um, and this is, leads us then to our final question, the sort of question about what are we really observing with the Arab Spring? Um, in some cases, you know, are we seeing a kind of unstable transition to democracy, consolidation of democratic values and institutions? Or are we seeing a kind of authoritarian persistence where there may have been a moment, a democratic opening, a popular opening, um, but ultimately the kinds of um, values and procedures we associate with democracy are not actually being observed as part of this transition process. So in Egypt, we see the popular uprisings have really given way to a kind of reassertion of military dominance. There might be uh, Egyptians you talk to who will say, well, this is just the popular will, this is the people's will. Um, but part of what we think about democracy relates to the procedures and the processes by which power alternates. And the way power is alternating in Egypt, we would most typically describe as a kind of power capture or coup d'etat, not a democratic transition. Uh, Tunisia provides kind of a more hopeful picture a country that has seen uh, forms of alternation of power, that has adopted a new constitution that appears to be on the road to transition, but again, it's still very early. And I don't think at this point we can even count Tunisia um, as a fully consolidated democracy, but rather a country that's sort of along that path. Libya post-Qaddafi, um, you know, it, this is a country facing a series of security threats, a lot of political polarization, tribal polarization, it's really unclear still um, how that transition process is going to, um, how it will end. And of course, Syria is uh, in the midst of a, of a civil war, a war that wages every day, that um, we know that hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced, killed, tortured, starved. Um, this, is, this is a conflict that, that goes on. One interesting um, kind of final observation is that the region's monarchies, however, have remained largely unchallenged. So there were protests in almost every Arab country of different size and scale. For example, Morocco saw some protests, Jordan saw protests, Bahrain saw pretty significant protests, but none of the monarchs were unseated. And the size and scale of the protests in the monarchies tended to be far less than in the republics or the countries that had presidents as their head rather than kings. 